What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the RP Experience. I'm your host, Andrew Regenard with Real Producers, and today we're going to be talking with Chris Evanson, uh, who founded the TXG, the Experience Group. Um, Chris, it's great having you on here. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate yeah. it. Chris is a top producing real estate agent here in the area. Uh, he founded the Experience Group back in 2014 alongside with uh, Sophie uh, Houston. Uh, before TXG, uh, Chris was actually broker owner of Keller Williams in the Naples and Marco Island. Um, he's been a third generation realtor, so Chris uh, obviously decided to keep in that uh, family tuition uh, um, generation and um, and continued his career in real estate. Um, Chris actually first began selling homes in Manchester, New Hampshire, um, but then realized um, that he probably wanted to be a little bit more south, south when it's uh, where it's a bit warmer. So fast forward to today, uh, Chris has been has three other team members alongside Sophie uh, who have helped launch TXG and Chris, uh, which is Chris um, uh, with Chris in 2014, Adam uh radno uh who joined the team in 2018 uh 2016 16. sorry uh, and kenny james who actually joined in 2020 so welcome chris it's great to have you on here uh, excited to be here thank you very much uh let's rock and roll my yeah friend. let's do it so today we're gonna have a little fun um you know on most of these podcasts we we find a very small hyper focused niche or a topic um and we talk about it and and the common denominator is well it's because it's beautiful in Naples and we should be here, you know, like we had one on insurance and why people are coming and spending all this money in Naples or, you know, this or that. And like, it all comes back to, well, we're coming to Naples. Well, let's step back for a second and tell them, Chris, why are people coming to Naples? What is it? Is it a lifestyle? You know, what is it? So, uh, we're talking about that golfing and everything in between. So excited. Um, the easiest way to probably answer that. Let's ask someone that moved down here. So you came down from New Hampshire and decided to move to Naples. Why? Well, it started back as a family tradition. My family had started vacationing on the west coast of Florida back in the 80s, starting in Venice, Sarasota area. Uh, my grandmother was a little bit of a pioneer in real estate, so she worked her way down to Naples by the late 80s, fell in love with it, uh, bought her first property down here. Uh, sorry, I ever sold it. It was uh, in the far shore <laughs> area. Oh, man. Um, but uh, she decided to sell it at some point in time. But I've been probably bought it for like uh, 50000 back then. Uh, I think it was like the 70s, <laughs> and we're, you know, uh, half a mile from the beach. Oh. Right? And today, that, you know, the soil underneath it was yeah. probably worth about a million and a half. Oh, yeah. Um, a couple of dollars. Yeah. Fell in love with Naples uh, lifestyle uh, as a kid. Used to love to go fishing on the beaches here. Mm -hmm. um, that's how it all started for me. Um, and then I continued to bring my family down here later on vacationing um, uh, in the Naples area. And uh, There's so much to do down here. A, I'm a golfer. I took up golfing late in life, uh, about 30 years old, uh, up in uh, Live Free or Die, Snowbound, New Hampshire. And uh, we only had four or five months a year. Uh, yeah, you had to get it in when you could. You're like, golf, 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 yeah, golf. Oh, yeah. We used to go full speed, man, uh, start in June and end in October. Yeah. Very short season. <laughs> um, but we'd play three, four, five times a week if we could. Yeah. Uh, but wanted to wait, make my way down here just because um, it is a golfing mecca. For sure. I did the same thing up in Wisconsin, you know, yeah, golfing. So you know. Yeah. It was like, you know, you had the three, four months to do anything summer related. That was it. And I figured out about 40 years old, I wanted out of the snow when I was uh, up until that point. I loved skiing, snowmobiling, yep. uh, doing all that fun stuff. I like the outdoor yeah. activity up there. Yeah. But as I got older, and uh, I think it was uh, 2005, maybe it was uh, 19 days in a row below zero. Remember it well. I uh, committed to myself and my family. We were leaving at that point. <laughs> so uh, we got out of there very quickly. In about 18 months, had a business to sell, things of that nature. But worked our way down here and always wanted to wind up in Naples because of the lifestyle, uh, mm -hmm. the golfing. The food, the beaches, boating, uh, we can go on and on. You and I mm -hmm. you know, could talk about this for hours. For sure. And obviously, that's why a lot of people come down here. And, you know, the famous line is, uh, I'll come visit, you know, mm -hmm. or uh, I'll come check it out. Uh, most of the time, that's the last time that they ever left. Yeah. Florida. <laughs> We're all very blessed. We get to work, live, and play, and where most people vacation. It, it is so, true, uh, you yeah, know, yeah. and it's nice, you know, they come on vacation, your friends, you know, you can convince them to come to vacation here and then you get to see them yeah, and exactly. then they go, wait, but you live here. I, I'm vacation here. Something's not right. Like, yeah. Well, you could live here. They all <laughs> want to stay at Hotel Evanson. Exactly. It's kind of crowded. Oh yeah, they it's do. Kind of, it's kind of crowded at times. People do. Yeah. 
my mom right away she was like i you know i want to be able to host our family and our friends and whatnot uh, and at first when she moved down here and uh, it was marco and she <laughs> so quickly she's like i'm done with this i'm not hosting people just think they can come down and stay whenever they want she's like i love my friends and family but she's like I don't have any of the time. It's like back to back to back, changing sheets and all this other stuff. It adds up real quick. Yeah, so. I know. I, I uh, purposely don't tell my girlfriend when it's coming because <laughs> I'm going to hear about it for the next three weeks. Right. So it's yeah. constantly happening. So. <laughs> yeah, I've tried to cut it back, but uh, you know, I, I enjoy having my friends and family. Here. Exactly. People love to come visit and, and you love to see them. So what is it that you probably ar- appreciate the most uh, in regards to the Naples lifestyle? Wow, that's a great question. Um, just the overall lifestyle, you get to relax. I mean, I, I much slower pace than I was used to up in the Boston area, as you know. I mm-hmm. went to college in Boston and started practicing real estate up in New Hampshire. Uh, came down here, was uh, was able to get rid of the suits, uh, put on some more casual clothes. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and just uh, start working at 10 o'clock instead of 7 o'clock. <laughs> um, just a much more laid back lifestyle. Um get to enjoy the area more, more dinners, boating, uh, take clients out. Uh, I, I incorporate a lot of the lifestyle into business. So it's, um, it's kind of a blessing for me. I get to do both at the same time, if that makes sense. You know, I always get in trouble for that. I always say, well, we're going to go golfing, you know, it's work related. And, uh, the girlfriend's always like, yeah, it's not, it's not work related. And I'm like, but it is, but it is. <laughs> no, I, it, we're going to stick to it. So girlfriend, 50, if you're listening, that's uh, my story and I'm sticking to it. And, uh, <laughs> exactly. At least 50% of my business is derived around my playtime. Right. I like taking clients out. We go to dinners, we go boating, fishing, golf a lot. So, um, and that revolves that, that results in uh, stronger relationships, get more referrals, things of mm-hmm. that nature. So. Uh, a couple of days ago, uh, I was chatting about kind of build relationships with a little uh, networking group. And um, I had mentioned about that, how, you know, relationships don't have to always be formed in the office. And they, they no. usually aren't. And, you know, some people are very uncomfortable being saying, hey, let's go golfing or let's go do something. But it's like, get if you're uncomfortable, you know, you're getting outside of your comfort zone, which is probably good. And that allows a, the, the relationship to be built, you know, tenfold. Um, so that's. That's big. And I think people need to realize that more that it's not, shouldn't always be that stuffy, like let's grab coffee. Let's, you know, go get a lunch or whatever. And you have that set amount of time, like keep it open-ended a little bit more and, and have a little bit of fun. So that's powerful. I want to ask you why you transition because you, you were, you were in the financial services industry in the sense, um, And you moved into real estate. Like way back in the day. Was it the suits? Uh, or what was the, what was the push? No, I, I, um, or it was your third generation, third generation. Yeah. Okay. I I, I, um, went to school for business and, uh, it was a natural, especially being in new England, getting into financial services and banking, looking at that, um, very quickly figured out. I didn't like it, uh, the restraints of it and working for somebody else and being third generation real estate, it was kind of a natural for me. So I just, uh, uh, started working on the real estate side of things and fell in love with it and just uh, continued to rock and roll from there. I've been doing it now. This is my 30th year. So <laughs> that's and, awesome. Uh, I wake up loving it every day as I tell people I'm very blessed. I don't work. I'm on vacation every day. So, <laughs> um, so you started in 92 then? Yeah, I got my license first in 92, went full time by 94. I had some other businesses, uh, sold those um, and went full speed ahead at uh, 1994 and haven't looked back. Uh, three different love states. Love it. I only know the 92 because it might be when I was born. Yeah, <laughs> She's been doing real estate since I've been here. So love it. Um, been on her. Um, what about, um, what about golf? Okay. You had mentioned golf, right? You mentioned why people, you know, come here. What makes Naples so a uh, golf, as you said, Mecca? Well, we have, uh, I don't know, 136 golf courses approximately in a 30 mile radius. Be the first is that what it is? Something along that lines. Yeah, 130 something courses yeah, in a 30 mile radius. Um, vast majority of them are private. You know, mm-hmm. have, uh, I don't know, half a dozen, maybe a dozen uh, public courses where resort style courses blended into that. But most of them are private. Have some of the best designs in, in the country here. Yeah, um, I'm very blessed being in real estate. I get to pl- uh, try out and play multiple courses around the area because of broker status. And uh, I've had a lot of fun doing it. He had some great layouts. And wow, yeah, played. Uh, Used to play competitively myself uh, back up in New Hampshire and Georgia a little bit, and so it's a passion of mine. I took uh, took off about a decade from doing that. And yeah, 
now I want to get back into it. So I just just uh, bought a home in the golf course community this past week. Okay, where which which course community? Worthington and Benita. Looking forward to it. Uh, yeah. Closing in about uh, two weeks and uh, nice. get into a little remodel and start playing golf. So there you looking go. Forward to that. Is that probably one of your favorites? Are you excited about playing there? Or like, wh- what do you think? Probably, um, if you would say your favorite course down here is what is it? Oh, that's a tough one. Um, my favorite would have to be. I want to ask this. Pine. I was just going to say uh, favorite, but then mo- maybe most challenging. Well, Clues of Pine is supposed uh, to be the hardest one, too. So. Yeah, hide, hideaway. Um, <laughs> uh, Old Collier. Like. Old Collier. <laughs> no, Old Collier I haven't played yet, so that one I can't really put on there. Um, but Clues of Pines would probably be my favorite. Uh, hideout would be another one that I've played, um, but those are very private. Um, Something in the middle of Old Cypress is a, a fan favorite of mine, uh, just from the layout standpoint, good layout, um, tough closing holes. Um, Eshuary, another good track. Um, so we, we have so many down here. Yeah. We, yeah. Uh, Quail West has a, a good golf course there. Uh, the Nicholas course at Twin Eagles. So I, I can go on for a while. So. Love it. Um, how often do you think you play? Or how often are you able to play? Not enough. Um, I used to play four days a week. I uh, can't believe I'm admitting that. I uh, brought it down to no days a week for about 10 years, and uh, now I'll be going back to playing about t- twice a week. Okay. Awesome. Uh, cause I do have a business still to run. I run a team and have to support those guys. Yeah, so talk about that all right we've we've t- when you when you say a business to ron right mm-hmm. and you talk about golfing and we talk we made a joke about relationship building in regards to golf um why um why do you enjoy mixing golf and business together well i just feel real estate's a relationship business um everything revolves around establishing that relationship maintaining that relationship uh building a trust factor between you and your client and hopefully eventually friend um, so it, it's a place for me to take people that are like-minded like me, like to play golf, uh, build a relationship there. It's more than just about real estate. Most people come to me for more advice than it is service, if that makes sense. Um, there's a lot of real estate agents out there. Um, everyone does things differently. So you're going to attract who you are. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I've always enjoyed using the golf courses as a relationship builder dinners uh entertaining it's just something i enjoy doing myself personally kind of showing off the lifestyle while you're yeah, all talking and, and about it, it. that's you know part of the reason i'm down here is to enjoy the lifestyle while i'm blending mm-hmm. work with it so um it this area allows me to do that i really couldn't do that when i was up north yeah i tried to do and and you're totally totally right i mean you know a lot of people you know we had mentioned um giving us a hard time for playing golf or whatever with business but like bill earls i remember the first time i sat down with him he just, the one thing I said, you know, well, what do you wish, you know, in regards to real estate or what you did done different? He said, wish I would have started golf earlier. Yeah. A lot of people. He goes, that. I would have been so much more far, like farther ahead. Yeah. And I said, wait, wait, wait. Did you say a hobby like golf, like mm-hmm. in your real estate career? And he said, yeah. And he goes, that's where I make all the connections in the business. And, it, and it's so powerful because if someone doesn't know, you know, it's, there's a lot that goes into golf and that you understand now how someone handles under pressure. You understand, you know, the honesty and the, the the different things that go into the game. Um, and so there's a lot of cool things that kind of happen through a game of golf, uh, that people would not understand. They think you're just going out there, you know, and swinging some sticks around and, you know, having some beverages or whatever. And it's like, it's very, it's very, you know, sometimes that's true, but, other times, very far from the truth. So. Yeah, but you can tell a lot about people and how they react to things when they're yeah. on the golf course. Huh? And <laughs> <laughs> Church of the swinging sticks, as I call it. Yeah, exactly. Um, but you, you, you learn. A, you can learn a lot about people out on the golf course, yeah. and um, it's also a great relationship builder. You get to have four hours together, usually something along that lines, and uh, talk about a lot of different things. So. Yeah, they can't really usually make up the excuse that they got to go. <laughs> Correct, they're trapped. So yeah, it's four hours. You're right? trapped, they're trapped. It's like so taking them out on the boat. It's you're like, forced well, to have a relationship hey. for at least those four hours. <laughs> yeah, the boat's going to come back. I mean, you can swim in if you want, but, you know, <laughs> so. Well, good. Um, Chris, we have some three three very engaging questions um, that you'll probably have some good answers to that we ask every single guest on here. Um, uh-oh. And s- yeah, uh-oh, right. The first one, all right. How has a failure or an apparent failure set you up for later success? And with that question, do you have a favorite failure of yours? Wow. That's a really deep question. Do I have a favorite failure of mine? 
or how has a failure of mine affected the future? Well, I've been in real estate 30 years. Uh, as you know, there's been a, a crash or a shift at one point. When that happened? What? No. And uh, a couple of those. My team kind of imploded when that happened uh, back in 2006 or so. Um, kind of purposely, I was relocating out of the area, but at the same time, I was trying to maintain my business and uh, failed my way miserably through that process. Um, was able to stabilize it, but lost uh, about half of my business during that process and uh, learned a lot from it. Uh, rebuilt and uh, was able to uh, thrive again. Reinvented myself. When what did you learn the most about it? Um, that I don't know everything. Be humble. Uh, it's very important. Um, you c- there's only 24 hours in a day. There's only so much you can control, and you can only control what you can control. Uh, you can't control others in the way they think or what they're going to do. Um, so that's a, a key component to leadership and my leadership style is is, is uh, learning about others and focusing on them because you help them get someplace, they usually help you get someplace. And I, did, I wasn't doing that uh, at one point in time in my career. and learned a very valuable lesson mm-hmm. in that process. So. That would be one that comes to mind right away. Uh, was purely that uh, the failure of uh, my business not going the way I wanted it to, um, how the way I had envisioned it going, um, and then uh, rebounding from that and making amends with myself with the other parties involved and uh, moving forward and, and really building something special all over again. You know, it, it comes down to is we all make mistakes, right? We're, we're all we're all human. None of us are perfect. No perfect people <laughs> in my world for anyone. And uh, you know, it's it's how you learn from them, which obviously you're you're saying you've learned and you you know you corrected from that, and and that's the powerful thing. Like we're all going to make mistakes, so it's how do we how do we take that and learn from that that what we think is a failure but all it all it was was a learning experience no no i embrace <laughs> failure now i mean exactly it's not that, like i go looking forward to it <laughs> yeah but, exactly but <laughs> when it does come my way i've learned to uh, learn from it mm-hmm. and, and study it and say yep. okay what could have i done differently yeah uh, that would have made the outcome change because again i can't control what you do or anyone else does i sure. can only control my own actions so uh, i've learned to embrace failure and try to turn it into positives as much as possible and how do you set yourself up for next time so it doesn't happen right yeah. that's that's the biggest thing i learned yeah. like if it, it doesn't always have to be failure it could be a struggle right if it's a struggle is why am i struggling what what did i do or didn't do and that's why i'm struggling so it's like all right like let's step back for a second so that Let's analyze it and say, oh, this is the reason. So let's not do that in the future. Yeah, you know, it's myself, I'm a team, whatever it might be. Yeah. It's, it's, it's an ever learning process. <laughs> and and uh, I never want to stop learning that. So it's, it's, mm-hmm. I wasn't at one point in time in my life. And it wasn't that I wasn't learning. I wasn't open to the idea, if that makes sense. Uh-huh. Yep. Then all of a sudden my brain opened up, uh, or at least I allowed it to. And then uh, that changed a lot for me. Uh, I went on to some great successes after that, even though I had a, a pretty significant failure. So mm-hmm. it's, it's been, uh, opening the offices and things of that nature, which uh, people told me I couldn't do. Hey, they, they call them ups and downs, right? It's a roller coaster. You got to have ups. You got to have downs. That's right. There you go. So second question now might tie into something, you know, when you had mentioned failure, um, but you might be unfocused or overwhelmed. But when you feel overwhelmed or unfocused, kind of, or you've lost that focus temporarily in a sense, mm-hmm. what do you do? How do you regain it? Uh, great question. Um, usually I take a step back and walk away from everything just to clear my head out for a moment. If things aren't going the way they should be or I feel like I've lost my focus or my drive, it doesn't happen often anymore. Um, but it, when I do, I, I really try to take a step back, uh, take a deep breath, look at what's going on mainly internally. What am I doing? Are there any things I can do differently? Um, and just get a refocus um, got to walk away. I think you went skiing recently. I was mm-hmm. jealous, by the way. Congratulations. <laughs> the uh, snow wasn't that good, but yeah. it was a lot of fun. But <laughs> you got away. And it, yeah. it, sometimes I find that just three or four day break away from it all is mm-hmm. very beneficial to clearing the head out and coming back with a refocus and doing it again. You're totally uh, right. You're you, totally you understand, right. man. You got to cleanse the mind sometimes and get too many rats going up on the brain and you got to fix that. And uh, just walking away for a few days and doing something different usually takes care of like that. Like a Thursday, Friday, and a weekend can yeah. be a game changer in people's business. And, and, 100%. And sometimes people like, oh, my God, I got so much to do. And it's like, you're right. You do have so much to do. But to get all that done, you have to be focused mentally, right? Mm-hmm. And so sometimes those step backs, in a sense, or whatever you want to look at it, recharge is critical. Well, and you know what, uh, especially running a team, and you kind of run a team yourself, too, is is – it affects the others around you. For so sure. I've got to be aware of that. So yep. when I'm not performing at my best, how can I expect them to perform at their best? So 100%. That's why I've got to always pay attention to that and 
uh, make sure I'm doing the right thing. So I, I know I can control that. Right. Lead by example. <laughs> All right. So this one's a, a question that everyone gets and it's always uh, usually people laugh at it. But what are some bad recommendations or advice you hear in your industry? Huh. Where do I start? Um, <laughs> one, never quit. First thing people always tell you, you know, take two weeks off and quit is an old phrase in my business. Don't. Um, you got to keep staying focused, doing the right things. There's only about five or six basic actions you really need to do every day in real estate to be successful. Don't let the, uh, the outside. All right. People are going to ask, what are the five to six basic things God, that you have to do that. in real the first estate? First one I'm going to tell you, show up. All right. There you go. We got one. Treat it like a job. Oh, that, that's, okay. you know, a lot of people don't do that. that so mean, there we go. That's that two. Mean, that means your boss is telling you you got to be there at nine <laughs> and you're not leaving till six. Yeah. And you might have to work overtime without payment. Oh, my gosh. So those, work hard, those right? Those are the first two things is yeah. make sure you show up and, and you do the right things. Um, then lead generate. Okay. Everyone, uh, we're, in, we're in the lead generation business, folks. Yep. Uh, but everyone is. I mean, sales, everyone's in lead generation uh, of some sort. You know, it's funny. I go into parties all the time and I ask everyone, what do you do for a living? And they'll say, I'm a doctor, an accountant, a lawyer, whatever that is. And I correct them and tell them, that no, you're actually a lead generator because you're a really good lawyer and no one knows that you're a good lawyer. You have no business. Exactly. And they all agree with me. Everyone. They all turn out and agree on yeah. that. So uh, first and foremost, we're in the lead generation business. Yeah. Secondly, relationship. Yep. Relationships. That's, that's yep. People forget they service somebody and don't build that relationship. Um, I'm very blessed. I, I work off, you know, 80% of my business is referrals mm -hmm. 30 years later. Mm -hmm. My phone kind of rings by itself without, right. without me having to make it. I'm very blessed for that. But that wasn't easy to do. That, mm -hmm. that took 20, 25 years. Oh, so it doesn't out. happen overnight? Like no, a lot of the realtors no, want? No, 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 none of oh, it. Okay. There's no such thing as uh, the magic <laughs> pill in our business. <laughs> right. Um, you you got to go out and grind Wait, Zillow's not going to give you all the leads overnight? No, no. Oh, no, okay. No, no, no. Okay, <laughs> that's another whole topic of conversation. So I, I think you that. covered the five. I, I lost track, but I think you, I think you got them. So um, I'm sure there's one or two more I can throw in there. But the bottom line is show up and do the right actions. Yep. Um, one is lead generation. Two is making sure you follow up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is so critical. So, well, good. Well, we've covered a lot of good content, and we've obviously explained on why someone wants to move down to uh, sunny Naples. Um, besides the good uh, taxes and uh, the beautiful weather, yeah, we didn't we even did. talk about yeah, that. No, we didn't even but talk about that's all. the thing. Everyone always talks about those two. So I'm so glad. Ten reasons why people move here, <laughs> and then we can go through that. List, <laughs> there's more than just the lifestyle. Exactly. Um, exactly. So, well, cool. We are wrapping up here. We're out of time. So, Chris, thank you so much for joining us. It's been Pleasure, an absolute my pleasure. Thank you for inviting me down. Yeah, Appreciate of course. That. So, as always, the RP Experience is extremely thrilled to have you on here. Uh, we're here at VentureX in the podcast studio. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for the next episode. See you guys.